All right, so we're finally done with the concepts and we're going to start to, um, we're going to get bananas, literally. So you can see that this is a more ripe banana and this one is kind of green. And I have another pair for our test here, for our cl classifier. And we have another green one and then another, it's, you know, one that's kind of like ready to get to be eaten. Um, so we're looking at this and now we can build a classifier. So let's imagine that we work for a company and they're building some sort of a machine that can really just spot old bananas and remove them from the sort of uh, truck that it's going to go on. Something like that. So let's go ahead and check out Teachable Machine by Google. And it's going to allow us to build this classifier without any code. And the reason that we're doing that is that it allows us just to really um, learn. So we're taking, the, we're abstracting the programming and we're just looking at the actual steps required to train a classification model. And once you have that knowledge, then programming is going to make a lot more sense. If you do it backwards, which a lot of people do, it's it's tricky. This way is a lot easier. All right, let's do this. And this is teachable machine. So a play on learning, uh, machine learning, but it's teachable machine. So you can train a computer to recognize your own images, sounds, or poses. So let's check this out. So here you can see that there's a picture of a dog. And here's metal or not metal, a sound, and here's a pose. So those are the three things that we can do. Images, sounds, and poses, right? And what's really cool about this is we can watch this video, but what you can do is just train a model. So how do you do that? So you have um, two classes and di different, um, so you're training basically your, your, your model here. So you're gathering and grouping your examples into classes or categories that you want the computer to learn. And then once you've done that and you've gathered those samples, then you're going to train your model. And that means that you're going to see whether it can correctly classify the, what is it, like a, a fresh banana or new banana or like, was it a green banana and then a ripe banana? Maybe if we had more bananas, it could be like bad banana. I don't know exactly, a spoiled banana. <laughs> um, but I heard that they're, they're delicious. You can do, you know, you can freeze them and use them for smoothies. Anyway, um, then you would export your model. So you export your model for your project. So that could be site, apps, or whatever you want. So that's a pretty exciting feature that you can actually export it once you've built it. And so here's just saying that you can use this with images, sounds, or poses. So definitely once you are finished with uh, this example, check it out and try different things. And there's some um, tutorials. And this is a banana meter. So if you want to check that out, that, that just happens to be serendipitous. And I think um, this is very common. Um, I was literally in my kitchen and I was like, what am I going to use for this next video? And I saw the bananas. <laughs> so probably what they did too. <laughs> That's my guess. Okay, so here are some things that they built with this. Um, and it's pretty cool. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, there's some other things that you can check out. And I think that's pretty much it. So here I've already got us started. So if I take this crop off, you can see that this is my whole video and you can see my mic, but we're just using the banana. So I'm just going to hold it up and then this is going to be the area that we're going to work with for the samples. So I'm going to say done cropping. And now what we want to do is, is, is record so that our first class, and we can say this is a green banana, right? And let's grab both green bananas. So I'm going to do this one first and let me show you how you do this. So once you click on record here, I'm saying the best way, I'll probably hold it like this. Okay, so uh, when you hold record, it's taking pictures of the banana and I'm holding it in different shapes, different positions. Now I'll hold it like this from the bottom. Okay, so those are all of our samples. So far 124, right? Um, let me grab this another way and I'll spin it around. Then I'll grab the second banana. So again, this is what we just did. And now this one has a different shape. This one looks like a penguin or something. I don't know, it's an odd shape. So that's good, right? So we can train it on these different bananas. So let's try to do that. So I'm gonna hold this to record it. And I'm spinning it around, trying to get as many useful images. Let me take my head out of there. Okay, cool. So we have 373 images of the green banana. So now we're going to grab this one and this is going to be ripe banana. So that's, we're just, you know, identifying either one of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and do ripe banana. So I'm going to click on webcam 
and I'm going to click on crop and do the same thing that I did before just to create an area like this and done cropping. All right. So let's get the first banana. And now I'm recording some samples, turning it around upside down, really just getting this, some good samples. So 137 so far. Let's try this. Get my face out of there. <laughs> and I'm going to do it upside down as well. Hold it from here. Okay, so 300 samples, close enough. 291, 373, that's close enough. And so we could continue to add classes. So we could add different stages of bananas, but that's where we're just going to stop here. Okay, so here we have green banana and ripe banana. So normally the split would be 80% uh, and then 20%. So that's usually what's happening. But again, we're going to do this uh, with code later. So it's not really important that we do this. So you can see here that it's still training. And we have about 20 seconds left, 10 seconds. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so now it's working, but it's confused because it's seeing me. So I'm going to click on the crop so that we can get this into the same area. And I'm going to say, all right, so it says ripe banana, green banana, because we don't see anything. So now I'm going to hold up a banana. Ripe banana is at 97%, 100%. Not bad. How about half of the screen? Same thing. Look at that. It's doing a pretty good job. Um, that's great. So let's try the other banana. Same thing. Pretty good. Partial. Pretty good. All right. So this is going well. Now, green banana. Maybe we need more samples. This is not doing so great, right? It thinks it's a ripe banana. Okay, there we go. So this is where I would, so, so we're running, this is good, but like what happens when we use this one? Okay, so this one is like perfect. Interesting. So is this one. Ah, I see what happens when you hold it like this. So we need more samples when you're holding it in this other position. All right, so we've created this model and we've tested it and it worked really good. We saw that, the you know, the accuracy of it in the bottom and we're able to test that by looking at the banana and looking at the percentage. So this is basically an image classifier with zero code. So this is the very beginning of us working with machine learning and so far with no code, but just to get the concepts down. In the next and final video, we're going to take a look at a Google Colab notebook and check out simple linear regression. And there's going to be some code, but we're not going to write any code. Again, just to understand how it works and what it looks like. And we'll see some data visualization and we'll see that simple linear regression, that, that bet line of best fit. All right, so that's it for this video. And I will see you in the next video on simple linear regression. I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.